Firefox version 80 has just been released. And if you're subscribed to me, or if you're a lurker that watches my videos, you may be wondering, why am I making a video about the latest version of Firefox when just a few days ago, I made a video saying that Firefox was dead? Well, if you read the title of that video carefully, you would see that it ends with a question mark. I was posing the question whether or not Firefox was dead because they've made a lot of decisions in the past and quite recently that kind of go against their core values. But Firefox is obviously not truly dead since they just put out another release and I don't think they'll be truly dead until either Chromium is better in every single way, including privacy, or if Google just acquires Firefox and Mozilla, which is more than likely to happen considering that they still provide the majority of Mozilla's revenue for Firefox, and Google obviously has more than enough capital to do so. They're one of the biggest companies in the world, but they're probably avoiding this move for now since they just got brought before Congress for antitrust violations and they probably don't want to get punished by more than a finger wag from governmental boomers. But in all honesty, I hope Firefox will just be made great again and some of these changes are going in that direction. So let's actually cover something that isn't even mentioned here in the change log. I guess it's just too niche for Mozilla to mention here, but we finally have video acceleration on Linux desktops that are built with X11. Video acceleration, of course, allows your browser to take advantage of your video card for processing video and other things in the browser that are a bit more graphically intensive than just doing it all in software, which is obviously much slower and much more taxing on your CPU because it's not taking advantage of that graphics card. Now this is a huge deal because if you're using Linux, there's a good chance that you're using X11 and not Wayland, even though Wayland has had support for video acceleration in Firefox since version 75. Now it is worth noting that there are some situations in which this may still not work. You see there's many layers to this video acceleration because we have a higher level piece of software, which of course is the browser, um, and actually even higher than the browser because it's specifically the images, video, and animation that's taking place within the browser. Um, and that has to interact all the way down with the bare metal, i.e. your graphics card. So if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card in your Linux box, don't expect this to work correctly or at all for that matter. Uh, so far, this graphical acceleration, it has only been confirmed to work with Intel integrated graphics, AMD's integrated graphics, and AMD's dedicated graphics on most of their video cards. So in the words of Linus from eight years ago in regards to NVIDIA's support on Linux, those words are still true today. So NVIDIA, fuck you. <laughs> Now, one add-on that is kind of whack, one change that is kind of whack, if you ask me, to Firefox is actually one of the first ones that they listed in this new category here. So Firefox can now be set as the default PDF viewer. And I think that this wording can actually be changed to make it a little bit more accurate because after I updated Firefox to version 80, it automatically became my default PDF viewer. Now, this is what happened on Linux Mint 20. I'm not sure if this is going to be the case on other distros because I haven't installed Firefox 80 to my other distros yet. Uh, so far, I just have it on my video production machine. And I guess it's not too big of a deal since obviously I could go back and change it. Um, I just left it as the default for the case of this video to show you that it is the default one and you can indeed uh, open PDFs in Firefox. I mean, it already had that functionality, but you know, now it's just the default setting. Um, and I guess that the reason for this is that 
it's good for normies it makes it more normie friendly um it's really a page out of google's book if you think about it because most people that are using chrome which of course is most people are also using google chrome as their default pdf viewer but mozilla should know that turning their browser into a uh, google chrome clone is not going to make a lot of people who are using it want to use it i mean that's the reason that probably most people are using Firefox is that it's not Chrome uh, and they can't really compete with Chrome because Chrome has this type of walled garden syncing ecosystem that Google provides when you have a Google account. You know, all of your stuff is there and it syncs across all of your devices. Uh, Firefox has a similar thing with the Firefox account, but you know, if Firefox tries to follow this approach of becoming Chrome, it's just going to make Firefox be to Chrome as uh, a perfect circle is to tool. You know, it's just going to be similar, but not quite as good in a lot of people's eyes. Um, so we also have a lot of security fixes. Go ahead and open this up. Um, several major, minor, and low priority ones. I'm not really going to harp on these for too long. You can read up about them. If you're really interested, I'll probably leave a link to this down in the description. Um, they did fix some pretty major things though, like privilege escalation and remote code execution and some other really nasty stuff that you obviously don't want your browser to do. Uh, I am going to be curious though, if major fixes like this are going to keep coming out at the same rate moving forward, since many of Mozilla's layoffs were people from the incident response team, the type of people that you know react to these CVEs existing in the browser and actually provide the fixes for them. I guess we're just gonna have to see moving forward. Uh, we've also got some accessibility fixes, like fixing a crash that would happen uh, when using Firefox with JAWS, which is a popular screen reader. So that's really good for making the internet more accessible to people who obviously can't see uh, their screens, can't actually see text that's on the screen so that it can be read out to them. Now, let's get on to something that is a bit more controversial this add-on block list. Um, some people are kind of freaking out about this, but a block list has actually already existed in Firefox, believe it or not. Um, it's already existed and the block list can actually be disabled by changing, uh, let's see, I have it here. So extension block list enabled, you can just change that to false and about config. Uh, and then it'll basically disable that. Now, the real question that's here though is what metrics are being used to actually put an add-on on this block list? What exactly is it that gets it put there? Because um, it says here this has been enabled to improve performance and scalability. Uh, that seems a little bit weird because obviously if you want really good performance in your browser, just don't install add-ons or only install add-ons that are going to give you better performance, which are basically add-ons that are going to keep uh, a bunch of crap from actually spawning in your browser, like JavaScript blockers, ad blockers, things like that. Um, so I don't really think that this description is really even accurate to what an add-on block list would accomplish. Um, what I would expect an add-on block list to accomplish is something like providing more privacy and security. Uh, for example, there's a lot of add-ons out there that are basically fake add-ons. Uh, they pretend to be one thing and then they start shimming in botnet and crypto mining code into them after they reach a certain user base. Uh, so I would be for that because obviously an add-on that does that is basically a bait and switch Trojan. I mean, it's malware at the end of the day. Uh, but if Firefox is going to be applying this metric of harmful language that we've seen so many companies adopting, including Firefox, uh, into their block list and start banning add-ons that use the word blacklist uh, instead of deny list or some other type of, you know, word that's supposed, supposedly excluding people or racist or sexist or any of this other nonsense. 
I already made a whole video about this, so I won't get into that. But if they're going to start banning add-ons uh, because of things like this or because of the personal beliefs of their creators and nothing to actually do with the add-on itself or its functionality, then I take issue with this type of update. Uh, because even though people can remove the block list in about config, only about 1% of Firefox users are ever even touching those settings. And Firefox already has a very small browser market share, so this could really screw over developers if it's applied nonsensically because you're gonna have a small percentage of a small percentage even being able to see your add-on. And there's actually one add-on uh, that has been banned, not on the Firefox desktop, uh, but it really doesn't matter here because this add-on doesn't even really make sense on the desktop platform, but this has been banned on mobile, and that add-on is the Video Background Play Fix. Now, what this nifty little add-on allowed you to do is to listen to YouTube videos on your Android phone in the background with the screen turned off. So obviously very useful. Now, I'm not 100% sure why this add-on has been banned, but I have a pretty good idea why. So let me know in the comments though, if you have a better explanation, but listening to YouTube with the screen off is one of the features that is provided by purchasing YouTube Premium for $11.99 a month. Now, of course, YouTube is owned by Google, who is also Mozilla's sugar daddy, who keeps funding them uh, and basically keeping Firefox alive. Like 90% of the revenue for Firefox literally comes from Google. And I have a feeling that Google ultimately made Mozilla do this. And unfortunately, on mobile, we don't have the about config modifications available to us. So... I really hope that it was worth it, Mozilla. I hope that Google paid you a pretty penny to do this deed. But we have other ways of listening to YouTube without purchasing premium. So all in all, uh, there's really only about one of these fixes that I like, and that's the video acceleration, which, like I said, it's only going to work if you have AMD, an AMD graphics card. Maybe this is more of a push for me to get an AMD graphics card. I'm waiting for the newer ones to come out anyway. Maybe I'll be able to enjoy better performance when watching videos on Firefox. But a lot of this other stuff that's here, and besides the accessibility changes to JAWS and stuff like that, or making it work better with JAWS, uh, a lot of this is pretty whack. I'd be interested to know... Uh, if any of you guys are actually going to start using Firefox as your default PDF viewer, I really, really doubt that. Um, these security fixes, great. Again, let's see if they keep coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe with the notification bell on so that you know when new videos are released. Bye now.